All right, so shalom and assalam to again, uh, Johannes Wilde Amanuel, RastafariRenaissance.com. And as promised from Discipleship Radio there on the DSR on uh, blogtalkradio.com, I still have uh, quite a bit of editing to do, a few videos, uh, quite a few videos here to share. But I definitely just start off here just from the mentioning from this pastoral portion, the RSS number three, Lech Lecha, Taleyetewetah. Uh, I really had uh, I stepped into a few other subjects, uh, you know, after covering most of the basics from the uh, subjects and the topics and the themes from this tour portion, especially. And again, we mentioned, you know, just uh, so much of the irony of the uh, title of the tour portion here as it is go for yourself, go search for yourself, go thou for yourself, or go. You know, uh, you know, just a sense of, of going and searching out, you know, and, and pertaining to uh, the, of course, um, storyline there with uh, Abba Abraham and uh, just the interesting play in which, you know, many ones are faced with and the decisions that uh, will have to be made going forward. And it has come up so many times, but, you know, especially for, you know, ones of uh, this uh, way of thinking, this way of seeing things uh, for their own manner and their own analyzation, it really is, um, you know, just um, more than a peculiar time, an eerie time, a time of, you know, a definitely much reflection, but, you know, it, it's a lot to really contemplate at this moment and really uh, assess, you know, for yourself, your family, your loved ones, those around you that you hold near and dear, but, uh, you know, not to, you know, babble off into another <laughs> another subject, and so to speak. Here in this presentation, we're here to present, you know, just uh, a little more evidence. Uh, and again, uh, just searching through our archives and bringing forward uh, a lot of the themes that uh, have been, you know, kind of shrouded over and not really paid attention to from a certain extent. You know, when we say that, especially as Rastafari in this day, in this Renaissance period of Rastafari, we mentioned that we are indeed African Hebrews, African Hebrew Israelites, uh, black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, uh, um, more specifically. And that coming from, of course, um, you know, our great rabbi, chief rabbi, Wentworth Arthur Matthews, as well as the teachings that preceded him with uh, Rabbi Ano Josiah or Yoshiahu Ford. And... Um, there from the uh, the history of the commandment keepers, we have uh, one, of course, uh, Abeta Israel, uh, Ethiopian Jew, if you please, who, of course, was adopted by Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, as well as his wife, um, Sister Mignon Ennis Ford, who also started uh, many uh, uh, secondary schools and uh, uh, elementary schools there. You know, all on behalf of the uh, Ethiopian imperial family. And, um, you know, just so much to speak on, just from this family alone. But uh, here, uh, this brother and uh, this elder who has yet uh, passed on to the spirit world uh, since uh, 2015. But here, this um, interview coming from I and I knew and um, inaugurated. Uh, Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Capers Fune, carrying on the tradition and the teachings and the lineage of the Ethiopian Hebrew, Hebrew congregation or the Commandment Keepers congregation. And uh, of course, uh, that uh, great, great history uh, there from New York and now residing in many other places like Philadelphia and Chicago, other parts of Brooklyn as well, as well as the Bronx and Manhattan. And uh, really just um, documenting uh, much of the history from which we have searched out. And uh, many ones uh, might not be up on, uh, so to speak, but uh, here's one who actually lived through these times, seeing his majesty, seeing the correspondence between the Beta Israel in the West, the Falashas of the West, as well as the Falashas of the East. So, um, you know, one just to uh, solidify the claims and, you know, really... Uh, um, <laughs> you know, just seal up the foundation, seal up the foundation here for ones who may have questioned a lot of the proof and uh, questioned a lot of 
the information which, uh, of course, we have put forward. And, of course, it'll be here for ones to analyze and critique. You know, and we're not just putting these things out for ones to agree with us or, or not. You know, it, it, we're not here to um, persuade anyone of their own beliefs. You know, you are, of course, uh, are free to choose uh, as you may. But uh, we are just simply here to uh, relay the message, relay the information, and uh, what you do with it is what you will. Uh, but of course, uh, we of course have our own uh, jobs to do. So uh, I won't hold you up uh, uh, much longer. Just uh, here to present this two-part series, you know, and uh, many blessings and uh, our prosperity, you know, and our big hopes for the continued progress of uh, the Black Jews and the uh, African Hebrew Israelites, the uh, Ethiopian Hebrews here in the West, as well as those uh, internationally. And I uh, have to uh, uh, give thanks, of course, to Rabbi Capers Fune Jr. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, Rabbi Sumozi of Uganda and the Abba Yudaya, as well as Rabbi Hidani uh, there with the Beta Israel in the state of Israel for their correspondence. Also, we'll be presenting also this information for ones to also undocument and have in their archives and uh, just uh, get a glimpse you know into the inner workings of much of this uh, this continued growth and uh, fellowship amongst uh, Hebrews and Jews you know international internationally especially of African descent you know uh, so much more to come but uh, please stay tuned Shalom we're at the uh, Kesher yes, Jewish Center in Brooklyn, New York, at 40 Hayward Street. And we're visiting with one of the preeminent scholars of the House of Israel, uh, not only in America, but in the world, in the presence of Rabbi Helen Prairis. And Rabbi, it's a blessing to be with you today. Thank you. It's a blessing to see you today. And, and I just want you to kind of, I know you were born in Ethiopia. Yeah. And I know that the Paris family adopted you and they left Ethiopia with you in 1936? Yeah. And, and uh, made, made their way here right. to, to the United right. States. Right. And the Paris family were members of what community? The UNIA. The UNIA. That is Marcus Garvey. The Marcus That's what it is. That's what it, that's what it, the origin of the Hebrew, the, this branch of the Hebrew. So that started. particular branch started, started with the Marcus Garvey. With the Marcus Garvey. I mean, Rabbi. Ford. Ford was a musician for the Garvey movement. Yes. Did, so you, did you know Rabbi Ford? No, he died in the 30s. He, he died, died in the 30s. But what, what he, well you can say he left the legacy, but what he did do was, he, he knew he wasn't coming back. He, he told his, his, his uh, wife, please stay. I'm going to stay and raise his son's name. In and, Ethiopia. And, in Ethiopia. And she did. She committed herself. 50 odd years of teaching Ethiopia. So she taught in Ethiopia. What was Rabbi Ford's wife's name? Do you remember? Mignan Ford. Mignan Ford. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so Mignan Ford uh, has been recognized by the Ethiopian government they, they, in the university to have a room honoring her dedication of 50 years of teaching Ethiopia when nobody else in the world came. She came. Mm -hmm and left a, a, a legacy, a real legacy. When she passed away, her sons came here many years earlier, and one son worked at Harvard University. He and, was a professor? Yeah, in communications. Okay. And the other son was also a professor in sociology. Uh, so, Do you uh, know the rabbi's son's names? Yeah, Abby Ford and, and Joseph Ford. Joseph Ford and yeah. Abby Ford. Yeah, we were born the same day. You were I mean, born? Almost, I mean, the same year. The same year. Yeah. So they, and they're both those, still here in America one today. One passed away. One passed and away. The other one, well, the other one retired from Howard. Yes. And went back to Ethiopia. To ah, live. To live. But he comes back and forth because he has to see the doctor, so he comes back and forth. So is this one of the sons visited with you? Or? Yeah, that's the one. Abby. Abby. Yeah. So Abby came to oh, visit. You heard about that? I heard about that visit. Somebody yeah. sent me a picture of that visit. Who did that? I, his cousin. Oh, you told me the, the, the yeah, yeah. You his his me. name is Ford too. Yeah, you're right. I thought oh, Richard. Oh, I Richard, think, yeah. Uh, okay. Richard. He sent me that picture. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I That's have great. that picture of I you, but I didn't know 
Um, he said, this is Rabbi Ford's son. Yeah. But he did not give me the name. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's Abby. Abby Ford. Okay. Yeah. So he was retired from Howard University. Right. Oh, and, okay. he, and and he retired. But and the, 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 like everybody, we all get old. The mother got too old to stay in Ethiopia, so he came back here to stay with her son in Washington D.C. because he has a home in Washington outside Maryland. Mm -hmm. So she came, and I was down in Washington a couple of times and talked to her on the phone. I never got to the house. I never stayed long enough. I used to go down when Berger used to have the sessions with the Congress, Congressional uh, uh, Order, the, the Congressional Committee for Ethiopian Jews, mm -hmm. where you had the, the, all the big congressmen, Jewish congressmen, mm -hmm. on there. I used to go down and meet with them. Okay. Then I talked to her, and she was getting increasingly old. She was mm -hmm. getting old after a while, getting old, and she couldn't go back like she used to. Right. So she stayed and she passed away. And the Ethiopian community, which is the largest in America, is in Washington, D.C. Yes. I don't know if you know that. Yes. The largest Ethiopian community is in Washington. Yes. They gave her a whole thing. Because most of them, I would say maybe 70% of those Ethiopians in Washington went to her school. They were the first school they would never make it. Oh my goodness. You know, so no, she did a tremendous job. Tremendous she, job. So now, two the questions. The other thing he did was to suggest to, 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 to my mother to take this ego with you when you go back. <laughs> I said, I never, I never. <laughs> there was so much. He just said, I'm not going back, but you take him. Right. <laughs> and so it, it sort of worked. I, I, I should work so that he was away. So did the rabbi, did Rabbi Ford pass before the Italian invasion of Egypt. No, during the same time. During the same time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was like in 1936 or yes. something like that. Uh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Because I was born in 33. Okay. So Rabbi. And then he left in 36 to come here. Come here. Yeah. So you were three years old when you were right. Right. Well, 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 two, 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 two years and nine months. Okay. To be exact. Okay. <laughs> 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 now, did Rabbi Ford's sons, did they maintain this Hebrew way of life? Well, that's 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 debatable. The, the the maintenance of it, or you can say, the he honored the honoring that people gave his father for the years he spent in Harlem, you know, projecting Ethiopian Hebrewism. Yes. Like but but functionally operating as uh, Jewish, he, mm -hmm. they never got into it. And Ethiopia won't get into it either. It was only the better Israel of it. Yes. The Jews, in that sense of the word. Yes. So he knew them because they were there. Right. But he never, uh, he never operated in a Jewish way. Okay. In that, in that sense. Okay. Okay. So do they have sons, uh, children? Do he has one daughter in Washington. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Very good. So you know, <clears throat> where else could we really go to get more information written about Rabbi Ford? Oh, I, well, the, there may be other people that have that I don't know, but you could check the Shumper. Mm -hmm. If there's anything substantially written, it would, it would, it would get to the Shumper one way or the other. Okay. And what the Shumper did do was, uh, to, for the Afro-Americans on this end, to honor Mignon Ford. They honored it at the Shumper. Oh. Yeah, so there's a record there mm -hmm. of what she did. And her husband is probably part of that. Okay. And you could search that way. And they, they may, somebody may have done something. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anyone really, because the Jews never took it on, you know, as, as usual. They don't take things on too much when it comes to Jewish today. Mm -hmm. But they have a question of, are you Jewish? Mm -hmm. You're not Jewish. How do you become a Jew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Because right. if I don't make you a Jew, then it's, yeah. You got a problem. Well, you, you must. Have, <laughs> you, know, you, you, must you, you were there for my Darasha on Shabbat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then what happened? Yeah. Well, that was my that was oh, my yeah. Darasha. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to stop letting people um, identify us and Define qualify it. us for being who then, we are as being Jews and, and making the world think that well, if he doesn't recognize, then, yeah, then, 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 then uh, what am I be. dealing with? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh my God. So. <laughs> So that was my sermon. That was that's beautiful. We are we are, we are really on top. Yes, we're on top because that hasn't changed. No, I mean, Jews may be moving 
a little better than they did 15 years ago, but they still have No, no. It, it's, <laughs> still, it, it's still the same way. It's <laughs> still the same way. Um, I, I've been called, particularly by the Orthodox community, a fake fake Jew. and what? Yeah, all Chicago people? No, 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 in Israel. Oh. Oh, in Israel? Yeah, yeah, what about But then I had others, Israel. but then I had others um, that have reached out to us uh, no. in the Orthodox community from Israel. Uh, oh, that's they, very were, interesting. they were with the group from the, uh, their leader was from the Ukraine. Um, oh my God. Um, they're not Lubavitch. Uh, Wait, Lubavitch. Lubavitch. Not Lubavitch. Satma. Not, no, not Satma either. The, 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 the head of the community today is um, Arush, Rabbi Arush, and, he, and his, one of his deputies' name is Laza Brody. Laza Brody is an extensive writer. So Rabbi Brody came to Chicago. Um, he said his master told him to visit and to pay his respects to our community. And he said anytime you, if you ever come to Israel, when you come to Israel, know that you can come and stay with us. And, We'd love to have you uh, visit with us. So, but that's the only group. Other groups are, you know. Yeah. Now, the modern Orthodox, my good friend, uh, is is just get named to take Abi Weiss's place at, at the yeshiva. That you Abi had. Yes. His name his name is Ashla Patton. So he's the new Rosh Hashiva. and I'll be back here in October for his installation. Oh. His installation is coming up in October, yeah. mm -hmm. and so we're going to try to make arrangements because uh, I'd like you to be there. I want you to meet him, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. um, when I come back for his installation service. Yes, that's going to be after Rosh Hashanah. Yes, yeah, yeah, Rosh Hashanah is like September the fifth. Yeah. It's very early this year, uh, and so all of the holidays. I mean, I think um, I think Hanukkah comes in like the last week in November this year. Ooh. And I think it like ends like defend December first or second. It's, everything is early. Everything's very early. Oh, in the country, man. That's right. Where do you come from? I'm going to go. And then have to talk about me. No, okay. But then I don't know. Minka service, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, well, get it back. <coughs> the, um, what, talking about Israel, one of the things, I don't know why, over the, all the years that Ben Amin was in, in uh, Mona, mm -hmm. nobody ever mentioned that Demona is really a Sephardic town. Did you know that? No. It, it's Moroccan? No. Yeah, never, I got very quiet on it. So, no. But I didn't know. He got a, he got a microphone, huh? So, well, he has, a, uh, he has a very heavy voice. Okay. So, 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 so uh, it, well, I, I brought that in because you talked about the Orthodox community. Well, there is that difference between the Sephardic and Ashkenaz. Mm -hmm. the, although it, it, some Sephardic seem to be weak mm -hmm. along the way, for whatever reason. Because recently I heard that there was a, a, a settlement, housing settlement, that had a, was rejecting the Ethiopian. Was a problem, but I never followed up on that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so the uh, it's good that this 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 uh, uh, Ashkenaz. And uh, yesterday, not yesterday, my friend, New York Times talked about the Gonzales of Cuba mm -hmm. that went and the Maccabee, yes. the whole Maccabee thing. So the they, 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 they Jews are starting to move different mm -hmm. directions. You know, they have the, the, uh, the, the one of the top reform synagogues, the uh, high a, a Korean Rabbi Cantor. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Bush 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 Yes, Bushwalk. Yeah. She's here in New York, I think. It was oh, for yeah. that's it. No, oh, that's the one at 56th Street. Oh, that's the big one. Yeah, the big one. Okay. That's 